Bonjour, Président Simon. Je suis Jean Yeh. Bienvenue. Nous continuons avec nous aujourd'hui. For those of you in the audience who do not understand Haitian Creole, I said, good morning, President Simmons. How are you? Welcome. My name is Emmanuel Cassio. I'm 21, and I'm from Johnston. And I'm proud to say that I served my year up internship as a, Brown, as a help desk analyst at Brown University. A few weeks ago, President Simmons asked me where my family was from in Haiti. Though I couldn't tell her then, I can tell you now. President Simmons, my father is from Ukop, Haiti, and my mother is from Jacmel, Haiti. And now my colleague, Jeffrey Moran, will introduce our keynote speaker. Well, I am extremely excited to introduce today's keynote speaker, President Simmons of Brown University. She listened really carefully and asked great, tough questions. President Simmons is the first African-American woman to have led an Ivy League institution and is also the first to have led a major college or university as past president of Smith College. Newsweek has named her Woman of the Year. Time Magazine called her America's Best College President. We saved the best for last. Here at Europe, we like to call her She Who Rules the World. <laughs> So, please join me, President Ruth Simmons! Look, um, how many of you here today feel, having heard from this class, feel wholly inadequate? <laughs> I do too. Um, it is such a pleasure to be here. It is so moving to be here. And I have to say that, perhaps I shouldn't say this, that if on this day you were to come to me and ask me for anything from Brown, you would get it. <laughs> so, so please don't come and ask me today. Um, I hope you all know how truly inspiring it is to be a part of today and to be a part of this program. I certainly do not want to be outstripped, outshone by places like Jeet Tech. I think Brown has to offer the maximum number of internships. <laughs> so, Let me say, let me say to Dominique, wow, um, I have been to many commencements. I've heard many of addresses from students. I think I can safely say, for all the valedictorians I've heard, for all the brilliant students that I've seen give commencement addresses, you would stand ahead of all of them. Wow. So you are beautiful, you're articulate, you're honest. Just to tell that story is amazing. Thank you so much for sharing it with us. And you know, don't ever worry about crying. Um, some people get very uptight about showing emotion, but don't ever worry about that. That emotion you have, you've earned it. Show it. So thank you, Jeffrey and Emmanuel. I'm so proud of you, um, truly, for what you have done. It gives me great pleasure to salute you and all members of the Class 13 this year. It's especially inspiring to so many, see so many people here who've helped all of you achieve this goal. To the family members, the year of staff, corporate sponsors, mentors, and board members, thank you for getting this class to this momentous moment. Milestones are so important in marking uh, our progress from one stage to the next. And in that sense, they require us to pause and acknowledge that something important has transpired. You know, I was very shocked and disappointed, frankly, 
uh, with the applause when this class was um, asked to stand. Um, this is such a momentous moment, I expected to hear a lot of hooping and hollering. <laughs> so I hope, for God's sake, that by the time they come across this stage, you will have gotten it. And we will be hearing the kind of celebration of what is happening here because our country, our city, our state need this experience replicated thousands, millions of times. And trying to magnify this moment and understand what we can do is so important to us. So let's get on the ball here and recognize what's going on. I'll be a part of that. So don't be surprised if you hear me. Um, you know, I have tried to be a dignified president for Brown. <laughs> But at some moments, I can't, I can't do it. So don't be surprised. I've heard about the variety of paths that brought you to this program. And so many of you um, have overcome extraordinary circumstances to get to this point. Perhaps you got off to a slower start than some. Perhaps you got derailed by the choices you and others made. Perhaps you had obligations that delayed your ability to look out for your professional health. I'm certain that those challenges, however great they were, have made you stronger, and that what you are doing today is partly the result of having overcome those stumbling box blocks. More importantly, all of you were accepted into this program because you shared a desire and a commitment to learn and the determination to do more with your lives. This has been a critical factor in your completion, but it will be an even more critical factor in your future. There will be more stumbling blocks. That is certain. Those of us who've lived uh, a long time can tell you that you can never be certain when those stumbling blocks will appear. But you can be certain that they will, in fact, appear. When you came to Europe, you knew you needed to not only make a change in your lives. Just imagine that. You got it. You knew you ne needed to make a change. Most of us in our lives never recognize when we need to make a change. So look how far ahead you are of the rest of us. You also need, knew that you needed help in accomplishing it. The willingness to seek help is a vital component of every successful person's path. Thank you so much for the celebration of your mentor's generosity. Just the fact that you came to understand how vital it was for you to have her help and then to accept it is one of the most magnificent things that we as human beings can do. And I always remember to tell my students when they started Brown, the most important advice I can give you as a student coming into Brown is to know how to ask for help and never be embarrassed to say, I need help. And no matter where you are or how far you go, you will need to continue to do just that. Seeking that help is a sign of strength and not an indication of weakness. I want to commend you for finding your up and taking the necessary steps toward a better future for yourselves and your families. A few weeks ago, as you heard, I had the pleasure of meeting with Megan and members of her team and Jeffrey and Emmanuel, proud members of this class. It was wonderful to learn more about Europe and hear directly from them about how this program has changed their lives. And I'm so proud that Brown is a partner with Europe, providing internship opportunities to these students and others in the past. We have a great relationship, and I can see from the look in your eyes we're going to have a greater relationship <laughs> after today. Thank you so much for what you have done for them. I was, in truth, joking with Emmanuel because I asked him. I have been to Haiti, and I'm, I follow Haiti very closely, and so I wanted to know where his parents were from. Um, and he wasn't able to tell me. And I think I might have even chided you a bit about not knowing that, right? Uh, it's important to know where you have come from and to be connected with that always. Because from that, you draw your strength. From that, you draw your identity. 
I especially appreciate Years Up's model of providing motivated, passionate young people with the kind of support that is so often assumed to be part of every young person's development. You know, if I may say so, when I was in high school, I had never considered the possibility of going to college. I mean, after all, how could I? But a teacher encouraged me and pointed me in the direction of a small college in New Orleans, Dillard University. Dedicated teachers helped me with my application. They prepared me for an experience that was completely unknown to anybody I knew. And listen to this. You know, when I got ready, I got in, I got a scholarship, but when I got ready to leave for college, I had no clothes. And a teacher from my high school took me to her house, went into her closet, and took clothes off of her hangers in her closet and packed my bag. That's the kind of help this country ought to be about all the time, not the kind of vitriolic um, messages that we get today uh, from across the political spectrum telling us that people are not deserving, telling us that we have to be, we can be selfish and hold things to ourselves and not share it with the rest of the world, telling us that reaching out to others doesn't matter. What kind of message is that? My point is simply, if it had not been for the support and encouragement of mentors, I would not have had the courage to set on this path. Along the way, many others appeared to guide and encourage me because I was open to receiving help and I was willing to act on the advice I was given. These mentors and advisors helped me succeed and I know I was lucky to have them. So today, whenever I have a chance, I pay homage to these wonderful people who pointed the way for me when I was young. And no matter how strong you are, no matter how talented you are, you have never, ever made it on your own, ever. So whenever you get a chance, acknowledge the people who helped you. And in that regard, I just want to say how utterly moved I am to be in the presence of the founder of Europe. Imagine an idea that grew out of, um, frankly, generosity of spirit to leave everything and decide that this was something that had to be done and then to set about to do it. Never forget what it is like for people to make that decision, to, make, to have a dream and to accomplish it. You will be doing that too. Um, I appreciate this model so greatly. I think I'm probably running over, so I'll, I'll, I'll just stop somewhere. Uh, <laughs> um, to the graduates, uh, listen, this event marks um, the beginning of a new journey for you. The skills you learned this past year will no doubt serve you well as you continue to advance and advance you well. Completing this program proves your resiliency and you should remember that in the difficult situations that you will confront in the years to come. You can overcome any obstacle placed on your path. And please remember that you have never really arrived at the point where you no longer have to worry. You talk about how people uh, treat you in terms of how you look. That will never go away. There are days, even after all these years, I mean, I'm ancient for God's sake. I've been through, <laughs> I've been through a lot. But there are days that I come to work and somebody shoots me down and they shoot me down on totally illegitimate points. But I'm ready for that, <coughs> and you will be ready for it too. Do not expect it to go away. It will continue for the rest of your lives. Welcome it, because every time it happens and every time you have to respond to it, you're actually getting stronger than they are, okay? And what you're saying every time is, bring it on. Yeah. <laughs> bring it on. As I leave you, I want to give you my very best wishes for what you will face in the future. I was very struck. I saw Viola Davis on television um, making her acceptance speech for the SAG Awards. And 
because of my age, uh, I can't remember exactly what she said. <laughs> um, uh, but I'm going to paraphrase, perhaps, what she said, because I was so struck by how important it was. Dream big and dream hard. I love that, because she turns the word dream into a vibrant, visceral, and active word that demonstrates purposefulness and determination. And that is the wish I leave with you today. Don't just go forward with your plans as they are carefully mapped out. Remember to dream big and dream hard. Congratulations, you're up class 13.